Hey, we're here tonight in the heart of Derbyshire on the River Trent for one of my favourite pastimes, wild fowling. We've been invited down by Big Steve of SPD Pest Control to do a spot of duck shooting, some geese shooting on the banks. The geese are causing major problems to the farmer on here because they're coming up out the river, coming on the river banks, into his fields, and they're waddling about, feeding through it, and they're just making it, his field is trashed. So he's asked us down here, see what you can do, lads, knock a few geese out of the way. We'll do our best. Canadian geese have become a pest over the last few years and can cost the farmer loads in crop damage. The splash ponds are frozen over, which means the geese are taken to the fields next to the rivers. We head down to the riverbank to set up, but we haven't even got there and the geese are on the move. Unbelievably, Big Steve is in the right place at the right time and he manages to bag one. Chunk's dog, Brock, seems to be having a whale of a time and doesn't want to give up the goose. Ha! <laughs> Who's the master here then, Chunk? It's very important to have dogs on wildfowl and to retrieve any shot birds from the rivers or ponds. Mine, he says. Come on, fill the way to that, dude. Fill the way to it, mate. It's got some brownie on that. Okay, how's that for a start off? We've just been walking up the river bank, see what there is mooching about. We've come down. There's two geese have come over the, from the other side of the river. Straight over Big Steve. No messing. Bosh. One in the bag already. Great big Canada goose. And as you can see, the size of these and the weight of them, they can really do some damage when these guys go on your field. So you imagine a flock of maybe 250, 300 hitting it, never mind a thousand. Wicked, that's one in the bag anyway. Well done, mate. Sorted. Wildfowling is something that's really close to me. I really enjoy wildfowling. When I was a kid, back in Scotland, it was something me and my dad used to do all the time. In fact, I think the first outing I had when I got my first shotgun was on docks. I absolutely love it. And tonight, I'm using Realtree Max 4 Camo. It's globally recognised as a wildfowling camo. It's designed to fit in in around water areas where there's reeds and the river beds, etc. It does a pretty good job. As you see, this is the kind of stuff you get all along the side of the rivers. You get the odd bit of maize and what have you, and it just, it just blends in perfectly. So, I'm going to keep down here, hope some more geese come over us. Fingers crossed. I don't know what you're thinking. What about the bling? Well, I would have used our um, real tree um, camo shotgun. Unfortunately, that's some Wildest gun cabinet. Now, Wildest may be coming with us tonight, but he had to call off at last minute because he's got a burst pipe in his house. But, as they say, the show must go on. It's what he would have wanted, lads, yeah? Actually, he wouldn't have wanted that. He'd have wanted to stick around and help him. But it's not going to happen. All is quiet at the moment, so we sit down and hatch a game plan. With no signs of geese here, we leave Big Steve here and head further up the river into a different position. But before we get there, the geese are in the air and we're in the open. Time for the yeah. camouflage yeah. to do its work. Yeah. Don't move until... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got some geese coming in now. I'm very excited. The geese come straight at us, but at the last minute, veer off to avoid the wires. We have to be careful to shoot away from the lines. Birds are nearly out of range, but Chunk just manages to bag one. Did you bring that one? Me? You got him, I think, because yeah. I went for the very end one on the far left. I went to, yeah, I went to. As the dogs are retrieving that goose, another scheme take to the air, and we get ready. Again, the birds veer off, but I just managed to clip one out of the bunch and mark it down into the field across the river. That's my shooting over for tonight. I've got to get over that river and find my bird before it gets too dark. All right, we all got a bit exciting down there. The first scheme that came over, we took one out of that. The second lot that came over, I clipped one and it dropped over across onto the river, but I watched where it went and I could see it drop below the scheme and it just drifted off and crash landed in the field behind. So we went over to pick him up. As we were over there, we could hear them get up again. So we just got down where we were in the middle of the field skin came straight over the top of us so we managed to bag another one out of there so all in all we've had four birds and for like an hour just over an hour's work that's really good fun and it's done the farmer a bit of good as well but these boys have been down here hitting this this week so it looks like they're doing the job there weren't as many birds coming as um, as they have been seen so it looks like they're doing the pest control bit and keeping the birds off for there so these will come back now we're going to use these we're going to eat these loads of breast meat on these so we're going to take uh, the breast meat off cook them up, they'll all go in the pot. I'll get home now, 
clean my arm sign off. It's took a bit of ammo as it does with wild fowling. So um, great fun. All in all, a great night. Thanks very much, Steve. And uh, we're out of here. Tune in at the same time next week for Apex Predator, when Team Wild's very own Ian Harford will be hunting an elusive sable in Mozambique. Subscribe to Team Wild TV for all the best vermin busting videos on YouTube and our new lineup of shows for 2013.